be fear. It's just the nerves, it is. It might be embarrassment. I mean, a horror film <laughs> with these is that bad. Or simply a case of putting it off. I'm not going. But one in five Britons never go to the dentist. Add to that our passion for all things sweet, and you have a recipe for disaster. Meet the owners of some of the worst teeth in Britain. Their rotten smiles are ruining their lives and they're still in their 20s. I just played with my tooth with my tongue because I had a bit of orange stuff stuck in it and a bit of my tooth come off of there. But all might not be lost. Three of Britain's leading dentists have agreed to take on these terrible teeth. Can they salvage anything from their ravaged mouths? The amount of tooth loss is almost that of a 100-year-old patient. If Sarah left her teeth in the state that they are, she's just going to be left with stumps. Or has the rot set in for good? Meet Sarah Hilton. Sarah is 20 and lives alone in Swindon. Most of us are guilty of eating too much sugar, but Sarah takes having a sweet tooth to a whole new level. Who doesn't love sugar? I mean, seriously, it's like, it's, it's unexplainable. It's sweet, it's, it's wonderful. I have loads of sugar. I have a pack a week. I'm not one of these. <laughs> plus chocolate, plus any other biscuits or cakes that are around. Not only is she addicted to sugar, as a teenager she gave up going to the dentist. She soon began to pay the price. It was around about um, when I was kind of like 17, sort of 18 age, um, they started to fall to bits basically. Bits came off of my teeth. Sugar destroyed my teeth. Sarah's tale of neglect and addiction isn't heading for a happy ending. Sarah knows her teeth are bad, but just how bad? Years of sugar addiction have left her with cracks, rot, and some worrying cavities. After years of burying her head in the sand, she's finally plucked up the courage and is going to visit a dentist. We live in a society where image is important, and the basics are important, if nothing else, and teeth hair and nails are all the basics, and I don't have the basics because they're ruined. <laughs> so I need the basics. <laughs> OK, good to go. Last year, Andrea Ubi was named Dentist of the Year. Her group of practices has over 15,000 patients on its books. The advent of um, cosmetic dentistry really, I mean, like, that's really been storming in the last, well, it's probably starting about 15 years ago. We do a lot of tooth whitening, veneers, um, cosmetic fillings, all that kind of thing. If anyone can save Sarah's teeth, it's Andrea. She knows the cause of Britain's terrible teeth. Where the biggest problems lie at the moment is in the diet, and that the diet seems to be, you know, much more of a problem than it was 15 years ago. Sugar is so bad because the bacteria on your teeth love to eat it, and then the bacteria love to destroy your teeth. Sugar is, is really, really bad. Bad, bad. Bad. She has agreed to see Sarah, but is she prepared for the challenge ahead? I don't know what Sarah's teeth are going to be like. It'll be interesting to see what we can save. Maybe there's things that we can't save, teeth that can't be saved, and then we're going to have to work out what we're going to do from there. But it um, should be exciting. Gemma lives in Western Supermare. She began to lose her teeth when she was 16. But her problem is not decay. Between the ages of 16 and 24, she made herself sick every day. Started off as anorexia and then, and then I became bulimic. 
college university was when my eating disorder really spindled out of control and my teeth have bared the brunt of it basically, you know. One book scared me because it had three stages, the anorexia, then the bulimia and then the graveyard. And I really believed that she was going to damage all her organs and that she would die. So. That's when I was that quite was when ill. when you were really ill and at your skinniest. But I still got teeth, so... Still got teeth, but you started to lose them just after that, didn't you? Mm. You stopped smiling in your pictures. That one's really sad. It's crazy, you know, I, I was an A-star student in my GCSEs. I was a leader of the orchestra, a prefect, a, a guide leader, you know, all these perfect things that anyone would want their daughter to be, that was me, you know. And I just, I think, if I hadn't had the eating disorder, where would I be now? Constant vomiting has cost Gemma 80% of her tooth material. The acid levels in your, in your mouth basically wear the enamel away on your teeth. And um, I guess once the enamel's gone off your teeth, the, there's nothing protecting them at all. And, and it does suddenly go from being a gradual process to suddenly they're gone. You know, hardly any teeth left at all. As her teeth eroded, her fillings were left high and dry. Even her diction has suffered. I do talk very tonguey. I am aware of that. I have to try quite hard to speak. One day I looked at her teeth and I went, oh my God, Gemma, they've gone. And she goes, no, no, but because she wasn't smiling anymore, she had nothing to smile about, she was so ill, she, she just didn't smile and we didn't notice it. And when I did notice it, I was really shocked. I think the children are crying because they have too many delicious things to eat, the Sprite began bravely. Everyone Gemma finally conquered her bulimia when she and her boyfriend Dan had Oscar, now six months old. I only stopped when I got pregnant because it wasn't about me anymore, which is ridiculous, you know, that something like that, and you can just stop like that. I it's like, why couldn't I do that before? But, you know, when I got pregnant, that was it, you know. She's been healthy for the last two years, but her teeth mean her confidence is still low. Looking back at it, I regret so much, and I mean, I've fixed everything now, but my teeth are still obviously there. Gemma would give anything to get her smile back. Rahul Doshi is a specialist in cosmetic dentistry. He is not unfamiliar with problems like Gemma's. We see a lot of people where we see wear on the back of the teeth. And when people have wear on the back of the teeth, the number one cause is that they're throwing up. He's going to look at Gemma's case and see whether he can treat her. I think I'm unshockable. I think I've seen everything now over the last sort of few, sort of, you know, 15, 20 years. Can a dentist fix my teeth? Can you make me be able to speak properly and I just want to eat properly again? It's quite scary, actually. People who think that they've got the worst teeth in Britain probably don't. People have this misconception that their own teeth are really bad. And sometimes that does lead to people not going to the dentist and feeling, oh, I think, my, what will my dentist say? I can't show anybody my teeth. Well, if you don't do anything about it, then maybe it may become bad. In Bridgend, South Wales, one brother and sister have avoided visiting the dentist for over 10 years. Paul and Jenna Leach are terrified of the idea of treatment. Their early memories of the dentist have left them scarred. I was about five, I'd say, at the time, and I was, you know, screaming and kicking and punching, and I really didn't want anything done, so the dentist told my mother to leave, and then he jumped down me and put his hand over my mouth and my nose, and I couldn't breathe then. So I think it's from then onwards. Uh, when I was about 16, I went to the dentist and I had to have a load of teeth out. And then my mate had to carry me home because it, you know, it was all painful, there was all blood coming out my mouth and all that. I was just scared then. Apart from emergencies, Jenna and Paul haven't seen a dentist for a decade. I will do anything to get them off me. I don't mean to be nasty to them, but if you're a dentist and you're coming near me, nah, 
You won't get near me. I'll do anything I can to get out of there. Paul's phobia took hold as a teenager. Uh, it's just like a uh, panic attack, you know, like when you start, <sighs> here we go, like sweaty hands, I start sweating all over and that. Uh... Jenna's teeth are a constant source of pain and anxiety. Crunch it all up. I've got to make sure they're all soggy. There's a few times I've done it and then I've crunched on it. I thought, oh no. You have a drink and it's a sharp pain in your mouth. You have something to eat and you can't... I carry a mirror on me all the time so I can check my mouth while I'm eating, after I'm eating, before I'm eating, to see just in case if anything's changed in my mouth. I just played with my tooth with my tongue because I had a bit of orange stuff stuck in it and a bit of my tooth come off of it. Can you see it? Jenna does brush her teeth. Well, some of them. She avoids the right-hand side of her mouth because it's simply too painful. Both Jenna and Paul rely on painkillers, sedatives and antibiotics. Paul's mouth is in such a state, even speaking is difficult. Every month I get an abscess as I'm in. You know, I can't sleep. I have to take, you know, like a Valium and that just to get asleep and that because, you know, like it's, you know, it's painful. Like... Oh. Ten years of neglect have ravaged Jenna's teeth. Jenna's teeth may be bad, but her brother Paul's look even worse. They have decided that the pain is so great, they must confront their phobias and try and get their teeth seen. Still only in their 20s, Paul and Jenna have no idea if their teeth can be saved. Us Brits are notorious for our terrible teeth, yet we're doing little to improve our reputation. Over 10 million people aren't even registered with a dentist. ITD, absolutely ITD, down to the dentist. Um, something I was really put off with from an early age. I, I went when I was about 14 and my, my gum got cut and I bled for ages and it, it scarred me really, really put me off. I don't really like dentists because, you know, drills and needles and whatnot, it's like, Whoa. No, I'm all right now with that, but as a kid, you know, it petrified me. When I did go, it was just a horrible feeling every time. Just either it was because he had to film, fill in, or um, he had to do something. So I was always sort of scared to go at a young age. So when I was old enough to, to make my own mind up if I'd go and book my own appointments, I didn't. Yeah. Self-confessed sugar addict Sarah Hilton's teeth are crumbling away. But Sarah's teeth didn't go wrong overnight. By failing to see a dentist for years, small problems became big problems. If you have a rotten tooth, then it just needs a little filling. If you leave it, it will get bigger and bigger until eventually you might need to have a root canal treatment, a crown or even extraction. The biggest moral of the whole story is get to your dentist really regularly. Today, Sarah has come to York to see if one of Britain's top dentists can salvage her smile. Andrea Ubi is going to see if she can undo the damage caused by years of neglect. Very, very nervous. I've got a headache and I'm very nervous. And I'm tired because I didn't sleep because I was worrying last night, so... Okay. 
Okay, so if you have a look at the screen, we're gonna have a little look around your mouth with the camera. So if you open wide when you're ready. Really bad tooth Ooh. on this side here. Gone very, very deep, and I think you're probably gonna need to have a root canal treatment on that. You need to consider taking that one out, but we'll talk about that once we've seen the x-rays, okay. We've got decay on the, the tips of those teeth, and then a huge amount of decay on that really bad one. Um, that really bad big one there that you can see even better now. So when you get a lot of decay at the front of your mouth, then that kind of implies that it's something you're drinking. So something that's swishing over your teeth going right to the front. When you get decay on your back teeth, it implies that it's something that you're possibly chewing that's causing the problem. So I think really we've got a bit of both going on there. PR6 is missing. One pass of the camera reveals the extent of the sugar damage. Things aren't looking pretty. Andrea estimates Sarah's teeth need over £15,000 worth of work. We have 10 crowns that need doing, including these two at the bottom here, two extractions, including those two at the top there, and nine fillings that need doing. Most 20-year-olds around the country, maybe every time they go to the dentist, they may need one filling doing maybe once a year or something like that on average. Sarah, on the other hand, she's got huge amounts of, of treatment to do. Um, it's just incomparable compared to an average patient of her age. Before she will even consider starting treatment, she needs Sarah to make a serious commitment. First, she wants Sarah to completely overhaul her diet. Um, one thing that would concern me is that we fix your teeth, get them to look fantastic, um, and then if the sugar continues, another couple of years, two, three years down the line, we're going to be at square one again. How would you feel about looking into reducing the amount of sugar that you're having? Definitely cut down, try and stop. Obviously, I'd go for it. She's also got to clean up her act and get busy with the toothbrush. So, if you have a look down here, if I just do it like that, the bristles don't get between the teeth. Can you see that? Yeah. If I squeeze it in like that, can you see the bristles getting between your teeth? Oh. I'm not telling you to floss yet. That's, that's your next lesson. Oh. So really good scrubbing. And I want scrubbing on the top of your, top of your teeth and then scrubbing on the inside of your teeth. I never really clean the inside. So. Always, always clean the inside. And then on your lower teeth, pretend these are your lowers. I want the same thing and I want pressure. Sarah faces a simple choice give up the sugar or miss out on being treated by one of Britain's top dentists. <sighs> Scary. It was like, I don't know, horror. Yeah, you know, it should be in a horror film <laughs> with these. It is that bad. It's like, oh my God, they're that bad. Worse than in the mirror, obviously. So, hmm. <laughs> In Western Supermare, Gemma Lundy is counting the days until her visit to the dentist. As a teenager who suffered from bulimia, she lost 80% of her tooth enamel as stomach acid washed over her teeth. Her tiny teeth dominate every aspect of her life. Even simple tasks like eating are difficult. Do you know, I do struggle with things at bread or, or corn on the cobs, the no-go area, you know, things like that. Anything you actually have to physically bite into, pick up and bite, can't do it. Normal chewing is impossible. Because I've had bad teeth for quite a while, I've, I've, I've learnt to eat with them, so I kind of squish everything with my tongue on the top of my mouth, and sometimes the top of my mouth can get quite sore because I'm eating by pushing everything to the roof of my mouth rather than using my teeth. Just suck everything to death, really. <laughs> The big day has arrived. Gemma has her consultation with cosmetic specialist Rahul Doshi. Open and close. There is no evidence of grinding, really. There's a the teeth up meeting. What happened to your teeth, Gemma? Um, I had an eating disorder, bulimia nervosa, for okay. about 10 years. So obviously the acid, level, the acid levels in my mouth eroded my teeth. First, Rahul has to assess the extent of the damage. Really wide. Excellent. And open up a bit more for me. The tooth wear is very accelerated. The dentine is so exposed, the enamel is so exposed. The amount of tooth loss is almost that of a 100-year-old patient. Okay. Rahul's usual procedure is to attach veneers to the healthy tooth. 
These are undetectable layers of porcelain, custom made and glued over the surface of the teeth. Rahul estimates that Gemma needs over £20,000 worth of treatment. But he's presented with a unique challenge. Her treatment is going to be difficult because the amount of tooth that's been left on these front few teeth is very little. Rahul's got a cutting edge solution. We're going to get a little bit of tooth space by doing a little bit of laser contouring and that's going to generate a little bit more height as well. It's a difficult procedure. If Rahul can create enough tooth surface, the plan will then be to attach the porcelain veneers. These will make Gemma's new smile. Brother and sister Jenna and Paul have come to a life-changing decision. They're determined to conquer their dentophobia and stop their terrible teeth dictating their lives. I've never seen nothing like it. They can't believe the teeth could do that so, you know, turn up that bad for them. Constant toothache means that eating meals is a painstaking process. If I can get away with not chewing it, I'll just swallow it. One slip of the fork and she's in agony. Their teeth have also left them reluctant to face the outside world. I used to be, you know, I used to go clubbing. I used to be, you know, the joker. Now we don't do nothing and I'd love to just be able to go out and not worry about what people are thinking about me. As 20-somethings, they should be out enjoying themselves, but instead, Paul only leaves the house to go to his job as a glass cutter. Shame over his teeth has made him a virtual recluse. If they do go out, it's only down to the local with Mum. Then you think everybody's looking at you, don't you? No. Well, I tell you what, next time we're out, we'll buy you them teeth you can buy in the joke shop, right? Like hillbilly teeth and old black teeth, right? You put them in and you come out with us and walk around and smile and say hello to people. Jenna is as paranoid as her brother. I think everybody's just looking at me straight away as soon as I walk in there. That's what it's like. It's like you go in somewhere and everybody's just looking at you, and you know they are. Look at the stick on her teeth. I can smell her breath from you, so I don't really bother. I'd rather go without going out, and then nobody can see nothing, and nobody can see me. Drink up. Hurry up. Are you itching to get out of it now? Yeah. Their evening out only lasts an hour, then it's back to the safety of home. People don't know how much their teeth are worth to them until, you know, you're in my situation. Right, just bite together for me, just close your teeth together and that's it. 50 miles away in Gloucester, Dentist Neil Taylor has built his reputation on his ability to treat the most phobic of patients. He thinks he understands why fear of the dentist can exert such a powerful hold. Some people don't like dentists or anyone else invading their personal space. So, because the dentist does get intimately close to you, um, you wouldn't let most people, you know, that close to you. Mouths are very personal areas of the body. So, yeah, you're letting some stranger you know, violate this, this space. He has agreed to take on Paul and Jenna, but his newest patients may prove his toughest challenge to date. In Swindon, it's been three weeks since sugar addict Sarah Hilton received the ultimatum from dentist Dr. Ubi. Start looking after her teeth or she won't treat her. On my cereal, I used to put on around about two tablespoons at least. And now just one teaspoon, that's it. <laughs> as well as cutting down on the sugar, Sarah's making the effort to brush her teeth properly employing the methods Andrea taught her at the surgery. I haven't got that kind of feeling of plaque building up, you know, sort of the sugar when it attacks the teeth. Don't have that junk and gunge. 
Sarah has a particular reason for wanting to succeed. She's been single for over a year and knows that her teeth are hindering her chances of finding love. I've been on a date once with a guy and he said to me, by the state of your teeth, I'd be worried about what the rest of you is like. I sort of try and focus on the good things, as in try and not focus on the lips because the teeth are bad. So some days it's shocking, you know. The other days it's like, you know, really slim, look good. But then again, look at the teeth and whatever I'm feeling just drops because they ruin it. <laughs> Sometimes he'll say, um, I love you for who you are. I don't love you for your teeth. My girlfriends don't really say anything. Um, my current one at the moment, she don't mind because she loves me for who I am. But usually it's like, I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, you're a really nice girl, you know, but your teeth let you down. Other people just say, oh, you're a dog anyway. They don't really. <laughs> when on the internet, dating site, and I actually met someone through there, but I only met her once. She wouldn't want to meet me again because, you know, my teeth and that. Gemma's back at Rahul Doshi's surgery. She's facing a gruelling six hours in the dentist chair. First, her whole mouth will need to be numbed with anaesthetic. Then Rahul has to burn away Gemma's gum. We need to grab a little bit more tooth height. And the way we're going to do that is by actually using a laser to just take away a small amount of gum tissue and increase the height of the amount of tooth that we're going to have. After an hour of laser, Rahul files down the remaining enamel on each of Gemma's teeth. This will provide the foundation for the new veneers. Open two and three, just there. It'll take another two weeks to create the porcelain veneers, so in the meantime, Rahul fits a set of temporaries. They'll give Gemma a feel of what life will be like with a mouthful of normal teeth. Here we go. When this blue bit comes off, it's almost like magic. Her teeth will have just changed in shape and size. Um, so just, just, just wait for this. Let's take this off and see what we find. Wow, you've got teeth suddenly. Here we go. The moment of truth. Scared this is a real you now. Have a look. Can you hold the mirror? And smile. <laughs> Gemma is halfway through her treatment. To get brother and sister Paul and Jenna to even sit in a dentist chair will be a major achievement. Tomorrow they have their first appointment with a dentist in a decade. The only way they're going to make it is with some help. They have come to see hypnotherapist Gillian Scully. Half breath in and up to two fingers again. Move your fist from there over to this side. Gillian teaches techniques to help control extreme fear. She teaches them a sequence of taps on different parts of the body designed to relax them. They'll associate tapping with stress relief. And now tap under your eye on the cheekbone. She then hypnotizes Paul and Jenna. She takes them on a mental journey to the dentist and gets them to tap the sequence at times of stress. And you're lying back in the chair, quite comfortable, knowing that you're fully in control. All you have to do is lift that hand at any time that you feel anxious. Okay, that's all right. 
Okay, Jenna, what I want you to do is just start tapping on your eyebrow as I show you. That's good. A little bit faster. Okay. Now, under your eye. That's good. Because you're aware now that you have tools to help yourself, to help yourself relax and be more comfortable than you felt in a long time, taking back control of your own life. Armed with Gillian's techniques, in two days' time, they face the dentist. When I was just awake and, I, and doing it, it didn't really seem to be doing anything. But when I was relaxed and, and uh, I was, it felt a bit better, you know, all relaxed and my eyes were shut, that felt fine. That was brilliant. It's judgment day for Sarah. Has she done enough to persuade Andrea she is worth treating? Now, talk to me about your diet. Have you changed anything at all in the last week? I usually have four spoons of sugar and tea. Yeah. I've been having less tea, which is two cups a day rather than four cups a day. Yeah. And I've been having two spoons as a four. Weetabix, I've been having just a spoon over two Weetabix and milk rather than three tablespoons. <laughs> I think the way you have to look at it is small steps. I'm not wanting to change your whole diet all at once. I think you've got to look at them as small steps. Tea, Satisfied that she's kept her side of the bargain and changed her habits, Andrea agrees to treat Sarah. OK, so well done. Yeah, well done. What we'll do now, let's get you in the chair and then we'll get started. Six of Sarah's teeth are so rotten that the decay has reached the roots. The gums filled with anaesthetic, Andrea begins treatment. Over four painstaking hours, Andrea has to carefully excavate each tooth, a process known as a root canal treatment. Inside the tooth it's hollow, and the, um, the reamers clean out where the, the old nerve is and the infected material. And then we need to put a rubber root filling material, a gutta perca, down to the very end of that. And we've got to measure it, so it's really quite a, a science getting it right. So we, we measure the actual length and we take x-rays to confirm the length. After nine regular fillings in other teeth, Andrea files them all down in preparation for veneers. Phase one of the treatment, and those are your temporaries there. So just bite on your back teeth and give yourself a, a really big smile. It's cool, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. These are just temporaries. Her permanent teeth won't be ready for a fortnight, but it's important to protect the newly prepared teeth from the elements. The teeth are just not sealed. It's really, they're made out of acrylic. They're made just for a few weeks, and after that time, they're not going to stand up to wear and tear, and they're going to start coming off. They're going to start cracking off. Mm. Definitely much better. <laughs> Sarah stopped the rot, but putting off that all-important dental appointment can lead to a lifetime of pain and regret. Well, it wasn't until, like, my uh, late 20s, oh, sorry, mid to late 20s, that my teeth started going bad. I now wish that I'd have gone back to the dentist, and if I'd have had them teeth removed, I wouldn't be in a state now. So brush your teeth or pay the consequences. Listen to my mum, definitely. Um, she's only telling you for your own good. Um, and you'll regret it. It might be five, it might be ten years, but you will regret it like I have. Definitely. If I had a perfect smile, I think it would change me a lot. After a decade without treatment, Paul and Jenna are on their way to the dentist. <laughs> I am calm. Just... In my experience, a lot of the 
a lot of the worry and anxiety is people not being in control. So if you give, give the patients back control, that, that tends to relax them quite a lot. My mouth is watering. I'm going to throw up one. Jenna's fear suddenly overwhelms her. She can't even get round the corner to the surgery. She feels sick. <clears throat> it's just the nerves, it is. Let's just touch and go. <coughs> Their hypnotherapist, Gillian Scully, has come with them to administer on the spot therapy. Just start tapping on your eyebrow. I've done all that. It's right where your eyebrow starts. With Gillian's help, Jenna eventually makes it through the front door. And up the stairs. It's okay. Do you need a tap again? After 15 minutes, she's only got as far as the waiting room. My name is Neil. Neil Taylor. Hi. 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 Okay. Now, then. Now, are you happy to sit there? Or do you want to sit there? By giving her a choice, Dr. Taylor puts Jenna in control. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll stand over here, so I can't touch it. All right. And put the arms up on. Do you want me to put the head rest forward so you can sit like that and move it? So you can actually sit like that. Almost. I believe it. Jenna's made it to the chair, but Dr. Taylor's now got to adjust it. There you go. No, I don't know. No? Okay, okay. That's all right, that's fine. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Forced okay. to improvise, he sets up surgery in the corner. All right, so can I have a... There you are. You open as wide as you can for me. There you are, like I say. My hands won't leave the ends of my arms, as they say. Right, OK. Well done. That's it. Just kind of general idea. Don't hold your breath, either. You're allowed to breathe. All right. OK. That's the top. All right. OK. All right. OK. Jenna can't cope with any more and has to leave without a full checkup. But Dr. Taylor's got a good idea of how much work needs to be done. Fill in your, your surname and your. Jenna's teeth are savable in the, in the main. There's only one that needs to come out. The others are savable in an ideal world. They are savable with root fillings, maybe one or two crowns. Whether she'll sit in the chair and let us do that sort of treatment is another matter. The first thing on Dr. Taylor's treatment plan will be to remove the massive buildup of tartar behind her front teeth. The saliva ducts in your cheeks, um, and that, that is spraying calcium rich saliva straight at the back of the, back of the front teeth. And so that's why it builds up. It's, uh, it's the calcium rich saliva causing the, the plaque to become calcified. <sighs> After an hour's wait for his sister, it's Paul's turn. Hi. Hi, Paul. It's over a decade since a professional looked into his mouth, and Paul's just as scared as his sister. I don't know, is it... Are you normally nervous, or is, yeah, it, I'm or is this just yeah. a bit of bravado because, yeah, you, no. because I'm someone new? No. Or... no. OK, extraction. Paul's front teeth are particularly fragile. The apple core effect is known as interdental decay. It's caused by food getting stuck between your teeth. And that's where these, this decay started, at either side of the teeth where they contacted. So that's why you get this, this that classic shape of decay. The prognosis is not good. There's a few the back ones there that just need, need to come out. A couple there at the front as well, which are just roots. I'm not talking about the very front ones. Um, but the ones next to them, you know, um, they're, they're just roots there, aren't they? Yeah. So those could do with coming out. Some of Paul's teeth are so badly decayed that they aren't savable. Nine will have to be pulled out. Paul will have to have a denture, treatment costing over £2,000. OK. <laughs> yeah. 
But Neil's main concern is being able to treat both patients at all. She'll be one of these patients who may even need a general anaesthetic. These days, general anaesthesia isn't available. So whether that will be feasible is another matter. So if we could get her even onto sedation, it would be a great help. Back home in Bridge End, Jenna is not looking forward to the weeks ahead. I am scared of the work, but I don't know, he seemed really nice and, you know, it seems like when I go there, he's not going to pressurise me into anything, you know, if I want to stop, he'll stop, you know, so it is, I'm in control. So that's what I thought every dentist should be like, you know, oh, no pressure here, yeah, you know. Take your time, you know. I thought every dentist should be like that, you know. I just want to get it started, you know. Just want to get it done, you know. After six years of living with her vanishing smile, Gemma is about to be fitted with permanent teeth. Hi, Gemma. Good to see you again. Welcome back. What we want to do today is actually give you your final teeth. With Gemma numbed up, Dr. Doshi can get to work. The temporaries are leave it off. You forget what was inside them. How little teeth there were really was. Then the custom-made veneers are glued into place. Rahul has to ensure that the new teeth will bite snugly together. This is a very, very accurate way of getting the bite spot on. It will give you percentages of exactly how much each tooth is being bitten on. After six hours in the chair, Gemma's new smile is finally finished. Wow, <laughs> they look like mine. <laughs> She's made it through 13 hours in the dentist chair. Blimey, what a difference. Seeing how bad they were, I uh, can't imagine being without them now. Oh, wow, it's so national. <laughs> cool. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In Gloucester, dentophobe Jenna Leach is finding it difficult to even enter the surgery. A harrowing experience as a little girl has left her with an extreme fear of the dentist. Today, Jenna and her brother Paul have their first treatment booked with Dr. Taylor. He's hoping he can persuade Jenna to sit in the chair so he can begin some essential treatment. Oh, I can smell that smell already. Can I come up to me there? <laughs> Until now, all Jenna has been able to handle is a brief examination. On a scale of one to ten, she is... She is nine, nine and a half. She is very, very anxious. Right, I'm going in. So you've come back all relaxed and, um, yeah. and ready to maybe let us have a little look at your teeth. With her brother there to lend support, Jenna manages to stay in the dentist chair. Last week, a terrified Jenna could only manage a brief examination. Today, Neil Taylor's plan is to attack the massive buildup of plaque that has been in residence in her mouth for three years. <sighs> Don't worry, yeah. Jenna. Don't yeah. worry. That <laughs> hole's supposed to be there. Hole's supposed to be Can there. you see this? This oh. is stuff that's built up on your tooth. <laughs> that's where I flicked off. There it is. There we are. Right there. 
Au! Nu, nu știu dacă... Reflectă-o până aia ce mă... Your hands are wet and poor. I can't do no more today, sorry. Spell them. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's going to affect your breath and the taste in your mouth and everything. Despite Dr. Taylor's best efforts, all Jenna could endure was some basic cleaning. You need to do more, don't you? There is a long way to go before he can tackle her decayed teeth. When we ever get to a point where we'll be able to do anything as complex as um, root canal work or, or crayons is, is debatable. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how we go. Paul left his teeth too long. Many of them are unsavable. He needs nine teeth pulled out. Today, he's facing his fears and beginning that process. Paul's phobia is so extreme and the amount of work needed so extensive that he needs to be sedated. This is Roger. Yeah. OK. Now, what we're going to be doing today is giving you the sedation. Yeah? So um, what we need for that is we need a little needle in the back of your hand for that, and that's why Roger's here, because he's better at doing that than I am. Sedation is only offered by a handful of specialist clinics. It's a bit like Valium. It's called an anxiolytic it, because it, it reduces anxiety. We carefully titrate it against the, or measure it against the patient so that they are never asleep. Feel sleepy now, do you? Uh, yeah, that's good. That's the, uh, that's the stuff we've given you. Dr. Taylor warns Paul about what lies ahead. And what you'll feel when we start taking these teeth out, OK, is you'll feel me pulling and pushing and messing about with your, with your teeth, OK? And then what you'll feel is you'll feel the teeth moving a little bit. Now, what I mean by that is if I grab your arm there, if I do that, uh, feel that move, can't you? But it's all right otherwise. Same with your teeth. You feel, feel a bit of movement. If you do feel more than that or anything, or you want me to stop for any reason, just pop your hand up, OK, let me know, and I'll stop. OK, you're the boss. He might be sedated, but the work ahead requires local anaesthetic too. Good man. You can feel it going numb there now, can you, yeah? He then gets to work. Mm -hmm. Why did you can? That's brilliant, Paul. Well done. Oh, you well. Ah. Uh. Well, that's up. Well done. There you go. Bike on that for five minutes. And we've finished. Paul's made it through the first treatment, and overcoming the first hurdle seems to have eased his fears. Out they come. Rip them out. Let's get them rid. I think I've had my use of them, do you know what I mean? <clears throat> Done brilliant. Really good. Shocked he's gone this far. Really good he's done. It's reformed sugar addict Sarah Hilton's final appointment with York dentist Andrea Ubi. OK, let's go. Today, the temporary veneers are prized off and the permanent veneers are glued in their place. A little bit of cracking again there now, good. You all right there, Sarah? Yeah. Give me 30 seconds. Okay, and plus. Right, down together again. Tap, tap, tap. And grind around side to side, front to back. After a total of 10 hours in the dentist chair, six root canals, nine fillings and a set of veneers, Sarah's treatment is complete. Wow. <laughs> you know, a huge difference. You're really pleased, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> they're much better than temporary, because they're not as big, so they fit better and they're sort of... Better in all, really. 
I'm very pleased with the result for Sarah. Yeah, difficult case to do, and I think the result has been fine. She's hoping her new smile will inspire a new, self-assured Sarah. It will give me more confidence um, meeting new people. Perfect, they are perfect now. It's good. Six weeks after Paul made the first white knuckle ride to the dentist chair, he's becoming an old hand. Fancy. No, anyway. His teeth were so rotten, veneers or crowns were simply not an option. Paul's already had seven teeth pulled. Today, the final decayed ones are coming out. Then a denture will be fitted to replace the extracted teeth. Jenna's made it as far as the waiting room, but she's still in the grip of her phobia. Paul's continued success is doing nothing to ease his sister's fear. I am jealous. If you look at what I had done compared to Paul, it's not much. It's like, wow, well, I had a bit of a clean and a scrape, and Paul had teeth whipped out, he had fillings there, and I just think, sorted it out. Back close, together. Back, back, close your teeth together. No, last week. Right, do you want to have a little look there now? Let's get out of your eyes. You can, put, you can put those glasses up there as well, if you like. Paul hasn't had a full set of teeth for so long, the sight of his denture is a shock. It's me, I feel weird. You've got to give him a good chance, though. You're sedated, you've got local anaesthetic in, so you can't feel half your face. There's lots of things conspiring against you at the moment. Next, it's Jenna's turn. Like Paul, Jenna will need sedation if she has any hope of getting her teeth fixed. Hi. Paul's going to stay in the surgery to give his sister some much needed support. Give her a smile, Paul. They look really good. They actually wouldn't like you, would she? She'd tell her if they were rubbish. No, I like them. They're brilliant, serious. I tell you if you look stupid. <laughs> but Jenna has her own treatment to get through. <sighs> come, on, come and have a seat. Come and have a seat. Now, I, and we'll have a little chat. Let's have a chat. Let's come around the front. Unless Jenna is fully relaxed, Dr. Taylor won't proceed. Even with the sedation, because you're aware of everything that's going on, I say you'll be sedated. I may get some anaesthetic in. You may not even let me do that. Um, and then we'll get halfway through a filling or something, and you won't be able to, you won't be able to stand it. And then, of course, if that happens, I've actually made you worse rather than better. I mean, I need to sort of help. Dr. Taylor can do no more for Jenna. Her phobia yeah. is too acute for even his expertise. Her only hope would be treatment under don't general don't anaesthetic. Currently, capable. there is a two-year NHS waiting list. My brother's done it and I just can't. It's been a month since Gemma finished her dental treatment. After living with a mouthful of worn down stubs for five years, her new teeth have taken some getting used to. I'm starting to feel like I own them more now. At first it was a bit of an intrusion, a big, big change. I couldn't believe how big they felt. So it shows how small they were before. She's had to relearn some basic skills. I'm still quite scared of eating. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it is taking a lot of getting used to. I'm quite scared of biting into things. Um, I don't know, because every time I bite into them, I think it's not going to work. Or I don't know how much pressure I'm going to put on. Or might I might break the teeth. I'm sure I'll get used to it. I'm just fascinated by the little teeth marks they use. Paul is all smiles after overcoming his dentophobia. Tonight, he's going out on the town for the first time in seven years. 
He's making sure his new teeth are looking their best. The dentist did say you could leave them in and brush them like, but uh, I find it easier to take them out. And people have been coming up to me saying, you know, like, oh, I got false teeth, I got false teeth, and the amount of false teeth I've seen is my drug, and you wouldn't even notice. Sarah is enjoying her new sugar-free life, but is still looking for love. Paul's sister Jenna has still not managed to go through with any treatment. She was never able to overcome her phobia. I feel well pissed off living there. It's my own fault though, I know it is. You know. What did I have done? A clean. What did Paul have done? Loads.